G'day again, Jono from Owner Drive. Um, we're in the process of producing another couple of videos with car owner reviews, which we hope to release soon. In the meantime, I thought I'd take the opportunity to put together another information video where we can get to know our, our cars a little better. Uh, last time around, we looked at the, the cooling system. I do find it helps to break down the, uh, the cars into the different systems when you're trying to learn about them. Uh, this time around, I'd like to look at the ignition system. When you think about internal combustion, you need three things. You need fuel, you need air, and you need fire or ignition. That's where the ignition system comes in. So like last time around, I think we'll, we'll take a look at the different components that make up the ignition system. Um, we'll discuss how they work, what could potentially go wrong, and how you might recognize that you have a problem with your ignition system that needs to be looked at. Um, for those of you that are interested, I don't think I mentioned this time around, what, what car it is, what, working on today. Uh, it's a 2004 Ford Falcon, so Australian made. I'm not making them anymore. Um, my boys refer to it as the bomb, as does my wife. I prefer to call it the beast. Uh, most people would probably lean towards bomb rather than beast, but uh, I still like it, so that's the main thing. Before someone beats me to it, I thought I'd point out that the bit of PVC pipe you see here is an optional extra. Uh, I'm using it to hold my bonnet up because the struts no longer work. Strong, lightweight, and uh, doesn't run out of gas. All right, let's take a closer look at the components that make up the ignition system. I've previously just whipped off the, the engine cover so we can have a better look. Uh, there it is sitting on the ground. Most manufacturers these days seem to, to cover up their engines. I'm not quite sure why. I guess they, they feel that it's more aesthetically pleasing. Um, so on this particular car, we've got what is called a coil on plug uh, system. So that just means that the ignition coils that you see here, it's a six cylinder car, so we've got six of them uh, in a row because it's a straight six, three, four, five, six. Um, because it's coil on plug, that just means that they sit directly on the spark plug itself. Um, I'll just grab a ignition coil. And I've got a spare one here. So that is an ignition coil. Now what is it, it is responsible for doing um, is stepping up the voltage. So it is a transformer. So my high school physics wasn't fantastic, but um, a transformer can be used to either step up or step down the voltage. Uh, so the battery, of course, is the first component of your ignition system and it's putting out 12 volts, which is not nearly enough because you need tens of thousands to produce an effective explosion. So the transformer, or the ignition coil steps up that voltage uh, a lot. Okay, and sitting under those ignition coils, we have a uh, spark plug. So there are six of those uh, for the six cylinders in this particular car. This is a spark plug here. You've all probably seen one of these uh, getting around in, in mowers and whippersnippers and things. So it has a conductive core, um, it has a ceramic insulation around it, it has an electrode at the end, and then a gap between that core on the electrode and what happens is that high voltage comes down and it arcs across that gap and that produces your spark. Um, so that's hooked up to your ignition cores like so and then that's screwed into the, the engine itself um, so it's igniting that fuel and mixture. Um, now ignition itself is all well and good but we need to control um, the timing of it, so the six cylinders fire in the correct order. As I mentioned, this particular car has a coil on plug setup, and those ignition coils are hooked up to the engine computer directly, so the computer controls the, the timing. Um, in other cars, it's often done through a distributor. I've had three variations of this car, dating back about 12 years, uh, the first of which had a, a distributor. So in that car, there was a single ignition coil, which fed into a, a distributor, uh, within that distributor is a rotor that's spun in unison with the, the engine speed. Uh, six electrical contacts are within that distributor and as it spins, um, it controls the timing that way. Um, this, then the distributor is connected to, to the spark plugs, got to mention by a series of, of high tension leads which, which are there to conduct the electricity to the spark plug. Um, second model I had, had six ignition coils like this one, but they weren't placed directly on the spark plug. They suck sat in a, a bay uh, adjacent to the engine and like with the distributor it was connected by a series of high tension leads to, to the different spark plugs. Um, that one however was controlled by the, the computer as well. 
Uh, now let's have a quick chat about what can potentially go wrong. Um, so on this particular car, if for example, an ignition coil wasn't working or a spark plug wasn't working properly, and one of the cylinders wouldn't be firing, um, you'll notice that because your, your car will run rough, uh, you'll be low on power, you'll be noisier, um, you'll use more fuel than usual. Um, sometimes this um, problem is intermittent, so it's not necessarily misfiring all the time, um, sometimes just under load. So when that happens, when you're accelerating hard, you'll, you'll feel a hesitancy um, when you do so. so. You won't have the same power and the car will kind of jerk you around a little bit as well. Uh, but when you're cruising, it might be okay. Um, so that's, that's an intermittent type fault. Um, as I mentioned, some of the, the older cars with a distributor and a single ignition coil, coil um, if that ignition coil is not working, you won't be able to start the car. Same goes for the battery, of course. If that's dead, you won't be able to start the car because that kicks things off for you. Um, so I wanted to simulate what a misfire would be like um, in a car like this. So I'll just um, go start it up now. So I'm going to have to yell because it's going to be hard to hear me over the sound of the engine. Uh, but at the moment we're running smoothly with six cylinders firing as they should be. Now if I go in and disconnect one of the ignition coils, uh, that will cause a misfire. So we'll be running on five cylinders and you'll notice the difference in the engine. So as you can see, it's starting to run rough. Um, if you're inside trying to drive that around, uh, it would be a very rough ride, you'd be low on power. If I knock out another cylinder, now it's getting particularly rough now, um, so it wouldn't be a pleasant drive at all. Uh, so you know you've got a problem and you've got to go along with the case to get it checked out. So I'll hook those back up. Five, six. We're back on six cylinders and uh, things are settled back down to, to normal as they should be. Okay, I hope that's given you a good overview of the ignition system, uh, the different components that make it up, what can potentially go wrong. Uh, ultimately, I hope this information will prove useful for you sometime down the track. Uh, in the meantime, I'd better go help out with uh, baths and dinner and all of that. So I'll catch you next time.